In this video, we will show you how to fit side ventilation with a screen. Here are the parts you'll need. Timber side rails are 47mm by 75mm, commonly known as 3x2, and supplied in lengths of 1.6m, 1.8m and 3.2m long. The side rail is fitted 75 centimeters above the base rail from the door post to the corner, down the length and returns to the opposite door post. It is fitted using the same method as fitting the base rail with corner and intermediate clamps. To get started, measure from the top of the base rail up the hoop and make a mark at 75 centimeters. Fit a corner clamp to the corner hoop. To assemble the corner clamp, place a U-bolt around the corner hoop with the threads pointing towards the inside of the polytunnel. Place the tube pressing and then corner clamp onto the threads, ensuring the corner clamp wings are positioned as shown, loosely secure in place. Locate a 3.2 meter length of timber and position it down the length of your polytunnel so that one end is flush with the end of your polytunnel. Ensuring the wing of your corner clamp is in the center of the timber and that the timber is on the outside of the corner clamp wing. Make a mark through the hole of the corner clamp wing. Drill a hole through the mark using a 9mm timber drill bit. Push a bolt through the timber and corner clamp, ensuring the thread is on the inside of the polytunnel. Adjust the clamp to the height mark and secure with a nut. To secure the side rail to the intermediate hoop, Use an intermediate clamp. Ensure your side rail is to the height mark and drill a hole through the timber on each side of the hoop using a 9mm wood drill bit. Place a bolt through each of these holes from the intermediate clamp. An arch pressing is placed over the bolts and secured in place with nuts. To add another section, you will need to join another piece of side rail to the one you have just fitted. Position a nail plate equally across the joint and secure in place using square twisted nails. You will be required to fit a nail plate to each side of the joint. Work down the length of your polytunnel, joining sections of 3.2 meter long side rail, finishing with a 1.8 meter length if required and securing them to the intermediate hoops using clamps. The side rail will exceed the length of your polytunnel and will be cut off later. We will now show you how to fit the side rail from the door post to the corner hoop using a length of timber 1.8 meters long but an end up to the inside of the corner clamp wing. Make a mark through the hole and another mark where you are required to cut the piece in line with the door post. Drill a hole and cut the timber and then reposition the side rail. Secure it to the corner clamp using a washer and nut. Use the spirit level to make sure it is level to the door post and then use a 4mm timber drill bit to drill a pilot hole in the centre of the inside edge of the door post through into the corner rail. Screw a 150mm screw through the hole to secure together. Reinforce the joint from the door post to the side rail with a nail plate and square twisted nail. Nail plates are installed on both sides of the joint. Fit the side rail from the door post to the corner on the opposite end of the polytunnel using the same method. Cut off the excess flush with the end of the polytunnel. Now we will install the side ventilation and screen. Ventilation screens cannot operate around corners and as a consequence the ends underneath the corner side rail of the polytunnel adjacent to the doors will be fitted with polythene panels. To get started, we will fit the polythene screen down the length of your polytunnel. From the end of the side rail on the length, measure in 20cm and 40cm. Repeat this at the opposite end. The polythene screen will be fitted between the two 20cm marks. Roll out the polythene screen down the length and position it so one end is on the 20cm mark. Ensure the polythene screen is flush with the top of the side rail 
and secure it using staples until you reach the 20 cm mark at the opposite end. Once you have reached the other end, use a piece of timber to cut the polythene panel to size. Use a straight edge to ensure you get a vertical cut. We will now fit the corner polythene panels to each end. Roll out the polythene panel and position it so one end is on the end of the 40 cm mark and around the corner leaving it to overhang the doorpost. Ensure the top edge is flush with the top of the side rail and staple the polythene panel to the side rail. Repeat on the opposite end. The ventilation netting can now be fitted. Staple the side ventilation net flush to the top of the side rail. Ensure the side ventilation net comes beyond each end hoop. If you have ordered timber side ventilation and screen for both sides of your polytunnel, repeat this process on the opposite side. The next part of the process for installing side ventilation is done once you have fitted your polytunnel cover. This is because during the process of fitting the cover, the rails are raised, the cover is attached and then the rails are lowered to add extra tension. Fitting ventilation before the cover has been fitted will hinder the process and will result in the ventilation netting becoming baggy. Please watch the video fitting the polytunnel cover to timber rails and then return to this section to perform the final fit of your ventilation and screen. A timber post 47mm by 75mm and 1.6m long should be cut to fit between the base rail and the side rail. This needs to be positioned flush to the outside of the end hoop. Secure in position to the side and base rail using the right angled clamps and screws supplied in the side screen fixing kit. Repeat on the opposite end. We now assemble the gearbox winding system. Decide which end of the polytunnel you wish to have the winding mechanism. The large hole in the faceplate goes to the bottom. Insert two nuts into the gearbox housing and fix the gearbox in place using 40mm M6 bolts. Fix the gearbox onto the faceplate so that the eye of the winder is positioned internally. Attach the runner wheels using two 25mm M8 bolts to the top and bottom holes of the faceplate. Secure in place tightly with a nut on each bolt. Screw the runner wheels onto each thread with the nylon washer visible, ensuring that the thread of the bolt is flush with the face of the runner wheels. Measure and cut the winder track to fit on the corner post between the side rail and base rail. Slide the winder down into the track and screw into position on the inside of the corner post, ensuring that the track is screwed to the inner edge of the post using 35mm long screws. The screen tube is supplied in 1.57m lengths and is swaged at one end and plain on the opposite end. The screen tubes slot together. When fully assembled, the tube will exceed the length of your polytunnel. You will be required to trim the last piece to size. Starting with one tube, use a 5mm metal drill bit to drill a hole through the tube, 7cm in from the end. Locate the drive pin into the tube, align the holes and bolt together with the 35mm M5 bolt and lock nut. Push the gearbox drive pin into the square drive hole in the gearbox. The remaining tubes should be slotted together. The final piece should be cut 2.5cm short of the vertical post at the opposite end of the widening mechanism. Finally, secure these tubes together using a self-drilling screw with the provided driver socket, 4cm from the joint. The polythene screen is fixed to the screen tube through the use of clips. In order to aid fixing, it is advisable to trim the polythene approximately 30cm beyond the base rail. Working from the gear winder end, Roll the polythene screen under and around the blind tube. Push the retaining clip onto the screen tube and proceed along the length of the polytunnel, ensuring retaining clips are fitted at each hoop. 
fit the remaining clips in a position halfway between each hoop. Slide the hook onto the handle of the gear winder and turn. The gear winder should rise and fall as the ventilation screen opens and closes. If the screen tube needs adjusting, this can be achieved by wrapping more or less polythene around it. With the screen now operational, you can now fix the ventilation net and corner polythene panels to the vertical post, door frame post and base rail. First, a batten will need to be fitted to the two timber posts between the base rail and side rail on the outer face. This batten ensures the winding mechanism does not damage the ventilation netting. From the outside of the polytunnel, lift up the polythene panel and ventilation netting as high as possible. Measure and cut a piece of batten to fit onto the post. It is not required to be the full height. Position this piece on the inner edge of the post and then fix the batten into place with nails. Repeat on the timber post at the opposite end. To aid fitting the corner panel around the corner, cut the corner panel parallel with the length of the polytunnel. Pull it tight and secure it to the base rail with staples. We will now secure the ventilation net to the base rail first. The ventilation netting is secured to the base rail using battens. To speed up the process, we recommend pre-nailing a number of battens. Nails should be 20 centimeters apart and should not protrude. Starting in the middle and working out to each end, pull the side ventilation netting down so that it is tight and free of any wrinkles and creases. Position a batten flush with the top of the base rail and nail into place. Now secure the ventilation netting to the timber upright. Pull the netting tight and secure a batten. The corner polythene panel now needs fixing to the door post and base rail. Secure the side panel to the corner base rail and door post using battens as demonstrated earlier. Finally, trim off any excess polythene and net. Repeat this second step on the opposite side of your polytunnel if you have side ventilation with a screen on both sides. You can find more videos to help you build your polytunnel and construct.firsttunnels.co.uk. We also have a construction helpline if you require any further assistance.